June 9, 1966. My very first dead body, as an adult. Norma Jennings drowned off Roaches Point in Rattlesnake Bay. Age 22, she stood 5 feet 3 inches tall, weighed 118 pounds, and wore her long blonde hair in a ponytail. Norma had fallen out of a speedboat, a Shark 235 with twin Johnson 75s. The boyfriend drove. They'd been fooling around. Norma rode the bow backward while dangling her feet in the water, letting her heels kick up from the hard surface, not suspecting that tragedy would strike. I pictured her smile and the brightness of her eyes, heard her brazen laugh. She wore a white bikini that barely covered her ample figure, a cheerleader's body. The boyfriend, Blake Rothwell, spun the boat's wheel at full speed, pushing it to 22 miles per hour, slewing through the waves at blunt angles. What a blast, he might have thought, high on the motion and velocity and thrill of doing something dangerous, something far out on the edge. Just the look of her made him push it to the limit. He wanted to be bad without knowing or caring or even understanding what bad was. Bad was in that summer. Norma teetered this way and that, moving with the motion, still laughing, grabbing at the edges and missing, breaking a brilliantly lacquered nail, too drunk to be afraid. She held a mickey of scotch in her left hand, and tilted it to her lips as Blake continued to throw the boat around in its own wake. I could picture the heave of her white bosom, the pout of her full lips, and see how she wiped her mouth after each pull on the bottle. I heard her titter as the liquor ran down her chin and dribbled into her cleavage. Her shrieks of laughter brayed out harshly over the wind and currents. I could imagine Norma on that boat, but in my real life, I reported the facts. Five foot ten inches, black hair, blue eyes, 160 pounds soaking wet. Twenty-six years old. Pugnacious attitude. Scarred childhood. That's me, Joe Simpson, reporter. How mundane it sounded. Just the facts, please. Just the facts, bud. How many times I'd uttered that dreary phrase, and how the facts, as I often knew them, bored me to tears. But then some stories came along and changed all that. I tried to escape from just such a story that had no ending, and then I landed in Applewood, only partially on my feet.